Next question is from Sarah Stone. What are some good ways to deal with a type A personality and addictive behavior? I sometimes struggle to find balance in life and easily get caught in the all or nothing mentality, whether it be diet, nutrition, etc. Oh yeah, this is this is a like tough all of our clients. This yeah, is, well, this hits home for me. This is yeah. me too. Me too. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I used to make a joke that that I'm like a light like there's I have two speeds like it's uh, I'm totally interested and obsessed or I don't care at all. Yeah, and um, it's a tough one to 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 work with and juggle. I think one strategy is to become obsessed with balance. <laughs> so it's like you, you it's like you're 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 focusing this laser focus that you have on the thing that will help you become uh, more balanced. So you're like, okay, I'm going to focus on being balanced. I'm going to focus on doing things that help balance my me out. So if I work out for example too hard all the time and that's my favorite thing to do, I'm going to start to obsess a little bit about mm. yoga, meditation, uh, relaxation maybe. Just kind of start the ball rolling a little bit um, because this can burn you out. This type A personality can burn you out, can cause a lot of problems, and it's going to take uh, some work because it sounds like you've already developed a, a, maybe a, your past winning strategy was to go all or nothing. Well, I, here's the thing is, um, and this one's really close to home for me, it, it serves itself for many things. It doesn't for addiction and exercise. Okay, so the all or nothing type A personality served me a lot in like work. You know, I have the ability, and I know it has for you too, Sal and Justin, like the ability to focus on one thing, put your head down and grind at it. Mm -hmm. You've probably had a lot of success, but when you look at things that your body can become addicted to and then also exercise, that doesn't work very well there. And you have to understand, it took me a long time to figure this out. So with I'll, I'll address the addiction thing first. So I have the same personality. Um, I then right I became obsessed with always having control of of myself and never allowing something else to have control of me. So whether it be caffeine, marijuana, any drug that you could think of that we allow to ourselves to take, if I find myself needing feeling like I need it or wanting it every single day for weeks on weeks, I now like, okay, this thing has control of me. I don't have control of it. And so then I become competitive with myself mm -hmm. to be the one in control. And so, and you get better and better at that. Sometimes you're going to, you're going to go overboard. You're going to allow yourself to do something, drinking caffeine or whatever the thing may be and get addicted to it. And so you'll have to backpedal off of it and it'll be this kind of ebb and flow thing for a while. So that's the addictive, the addictive behavior thing. And then the, the weightlifting thing, I used to be like this, where I was either on or off. If I was on, I was, I was measuring my food, I was dial eating, I was training five to seven days a week and like felt great. And then when I was off, I had this attitude of like, well, why should I train if my diet was whack today? Like it, it's I'm, not worth it. It's not worth it, yeah. right? And that's not true. Uh, it's totally different for me now. Like if I, I, I'm far better off at least getting two or three days in training, even if I haven't really dialed my diet in. I mean, when you're talking about overall health and then also the benefits of training, training has so many other benefits other than just your weight gain and weight loss. Exercise is so good for the brain. It's so good for your energy level. It's so good for your sleep. It's so good for my relationships with people, like my productivity at work. Like, So it's not just about what I look like and when I'm dialed in food wise. And, and that's how I used to measure it before. It was all about, you know, what I look like. And I knew that if I wasn't eating correctly and I was training, I really wasn't going to see progress in the way I looked very much. And so then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm off. But when you actually start to value exercise for all the other benefits of it, you start to look at this like all or nothing attitude, totally different. It's like, oh, okay, maybe I didn't have a great week of eating, but I trained three or four times. Therefore, all these other, maybe I didn't make progress in my fat loss or make progress in looking better, but I did have better energy. I did have better sleep. I did have better sex. I had all these other things that weightlifting bleeds into. And so you have to kind of reframe the way you look at exercise. Yeah, I think you just, if this is your mentality, you have to put that kind of intensity in barriers, in checks and balances. You have to really plan it out. And that's something you have to assess this constantly. So you have to assess each day, like uh, what you've done for recovery, what you've done. Uh, can I get more competitive with trying to challenge myself to get better sleep? And what does that look like? Um, and, and can I accomplish all this work in a, in a smaller window? 
and, and that's something that I've really tried to to challenge myself uh, is to be able to like be more efficient and, and figure this out so that way I can open up more space. So really, the the competitiveness for me and that drive was now you know focused more on like how much open space can I create uh, so I can you know put pour back into myself. Yeah. Now studies uh, show that there is a strategy that you can take that might help with this, and that is to schedule uh, breaks or vacations. Um, so because type A people tend to, things have to be scheduled and measured and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, book yourself a weekend or a week where you know you're going to go on vacation and you're saying to yourself, okay, because I'm on vacation, I know it's going to be okay to not exercise, to be looser with my diet or to not focus on work. I'm just going to relax or whatever. And they find in studies that this helps build uh, that into your life. So you start off with these scheduled breaks and then eventually you start to make them more a part of your life. Um, you know, vacations for me were something I discovered r relatively recently. They did that for me. I would take a vacation and I'd find that I was able to unwind and disconnect a little bit. And then when I came back, I felt much better and I started to value them differently. So maybe try something like that out. Try maybe a workout break. You know, if you're obsessed with your workout, um, schedule a workout break and say, okay, every five weeks or whatever, every four weeks, I'm going to take four days off and not work out at all. And maybe you need to sell it to yourself and say, you know, it's going to help you get in better shape or right. whatever, but do it. Just take that, take the break. Um, and it help, it might help, uh, you reassess the situation and, and have a different perspective.